Hey, welcome to another Fireside Chat. Glad you are with us today. Hey, it's Holy Week, and I, I'm kind of excited about that. I'm a pastor, so I kind of nerd out on that stuff, but it is Holy Week. It's the most important week for us as followers of Jesus. Um, this last Sunday, uh, I was preaching uh, for Palm Sunday, and we were talking about salvation. We were using the criminal on the cross next to Jesus from Luke 23, and, and uh, one of the things I said, I actually jumped ahead into Romans chapter 10, verse 9, uh, where it talks about, you know, if I was talking about how do we exactly, exactly on our end, trying to use the English language, exactly, um, on our end, how do we gain that salvation? What do we need to do? And it says we need to believe. We need to believe in Jesus as Lord. We need to believe in a bodily resurrection. And that's what it says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. And uh, so then I thought, well, wait a minute. Let's not miss out on God's side of salvation. You know, most of us know something about John 3.16. God loved the world so much that he sent his son that whoever believed in him would not die but have eternal life. That's salvation. That's what we're talking about. But the process was hard. And as we're into Holy Week, I, I don't want us to miss what Jesus did for us. Now, you and I, we probably can't quite understand this, and I'm pretty sure I can't explain it thoroughly because it's a God thing and not a human thing, but let me try, let me just take us there, uh, as in, like, why is this so important? Why is it important for us to celebrate Holy Week? Why is it important for us to come back to that death and resurrection? Well, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verse 21, we're reminded by Paul that the one who never sinned, Jesus, became sin on the cross. Like, he, he embodied all of the world's sin throughout history, including now in 2020. Like, all of your sins, all of my sins, were taken on Jesus. He became that sin so that it could die off. Somebody needs to die for our sinfulness. That's what we're told. The ways of sin is death. And, and so somebody needs to die. And it's said in that moment that Jesus became sin. Now, if he's sin, he can't be next to his holy God. He can't be next to his heavenly Father. He can't be close because holiness can't be connected to sinfulness. But Jesus became sin on the cross. Now, I don't know about you, but I sometimes miss loved ones. Anybody? Do you miss loved ones? I mean, maybe you're staying at home and you should be staying at home. So if you're staying at home, maybe there is a loved one you can't be near. Maybe it's a, a grandparent or a, a sibling that's moved away or whatever, or, or nieces, nephews, grandchildren. It's, it's difficult. The other night, I had an opportunity to watch uh, my dad preach, and uh, I was reminded how much I miss him. He was not only my dad, he was uh, my best friend, my mentor in ministry, and I got to watch him preach. We had a recording of it, and I miss him. He's been gone for a number of years now, and I miss him, and it, it hurts my heart when I think about him. Um, I know where he's at. I know I'll see him again, but... It doesn't mean I don't wish I could be next to him or near him or talk to him again. Uh, and so I want you to think about the person you miss the most, just for a moment. And then I want you to think about Jesus and his heavenly Father, who had a, such an intense relationship. The two are one. The three are one. We talk about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit being one. And they were so close. And, and Jesus and his heavenly Father having intimate conversations that we find in Scripture. But in that moment, he was separated, and he couldn't connect with his Heavenly Father. Imagine the pain, not just the agony of having stakes driven through your wrists and ankles and hung up on a cross to suffocate, not, not just that, but think about the pain of being separated in those moments from his Heavenly Father. It's kind of like what some people are having to go through now. They're losing loved ones but can't be near them. It's difficult. It's challenging. But the intensity... Jesus and his Heavenly Father in that separation. I want you to just imagine what Jesus went through for us. What would it feel like to have, I know I'm miserable from my own sins, imagine having the sins of all of humanity throughout history laid upon you, and then being separated from the only one who sustains you. Boy, that's hard. And so, so I think it's worth it for us. As we think about this Holy Week, our end is to just believe believe that there was a bodily resurrection, he came back to life, to, to believe in him as Lord. Our part's easy. 
Jesus' part was very hard, and I don't want us to forget that. And so I think it's worth it for us to take time to grow in our relationship with Jesus, to, to set aside some other things and to say, you know what, I want to keep growing in my faith. I want to take time in Scripture. I, I love um, in uh, Psalm chapter 1, verse 2, it talks about meditating on God's law being in it every day, day and night. I'm going to spend time reading God's Word and learning not just about who He is, but who He wants me to be, and not just a head knowledge, but having it in my heart that I have that relationship with Him. Now, we've got a couple opportunities yet this week for us to keep growing in our faith and to get closer to Christ. One of those is going to happen um, Thursday night. We're doing a Monday Thursday worship, and you can find that on our stream, bmzchurch.org forward slash stream. Uh, you can find that there, 6.30 p.m. on Thursday. Now, th that is a night when we celebrate or we remember the Last Supper that Jesus had in the upper room with his disciples. And we'll go through scripture on that. But I also want us to have communion. Now, I can't serve it to you, but I want you to be prepared as much as you can. Have something in front of you. When we start that worship at 6.30, have something in front of you that maybe it's bread. Break bread together and serve each other in your home, in the safety of your home. Serve each other. If you don't have grape juice, use apple juice, use orange juice, use water, use something. But to say that we're going to have communion together, even though we're separated, but we're going to have communion together. We're going to do that on Thursday, again, that's 6.30 p.m. on our live stream, which is bmzchurch.org forward slash stream. I want to make sure you're there. And then we also have a Good Friday worship coming up at noon on Friday, because again, Good Friday this year is on Friday. All right, and don't forget our Easter worship is coming up, and you'll have reminders for that as well. All right, so again, just a reminder, our eternity hangs in the balance. Will we grow in our faith? Will we get closer to the one who gave everything for us? We'll see you next time on a Fireside Chat. Say hi to everybody. Hmm? Yeah, hoping for the fireside chat.